Is Namor better than Hyperion for spamming in special attacks? Is Sue Storm indeed the best defender to come out of 2019? We have the data mine information, so we're going to find out now. I'm Rich the Man, and welcome to my Undersea Odyssey, where we're going to find out what the heck is going on with the abilities of Namor as well as Sue Storm. And also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content that's associated with Marvel Contest of Champions, as well as the Marvel Contest of Champions news. And also, look out for a new feature on the channel, which is in every video, I do the random random character fact of the day. So stay tuned. The major point about the leak of information about the abilities is the champion classing. For a lot of the community, we pretty much knew that we were going to get Sue Storm, Invisible Woman, as a science-based character. But what about the Submariner? Well, it looks like he's going to be a mutant. Kabam could have done any one of two ways, and I think that a lot of the community pretty much knew he was going to be a mutant, but there was a strong drive to have him as a mystic-based character and to a lesser degree something of a skill. But I think they pretty much got it right with having a mutant. Before we fully dive into Namor's abilities, massive shout out goes to Otrux for the amazing work he does for the community and data mining this information. Namor's signature ability seems to be pretty cool when it comes to absorbing damage in and hitting back out. So that hydrokinetic armor is going to be a bit of a pain, especially going from a defense perspective. Which kind of makes you feel like, hey, could we put this guy in some sort of defense? Maybe, but also this could be another time where people whip out their bishops because, well, let's face it, energy-based damage is going to be quite effective. Those champions that don't have very good energy resistance are going to be really punished. So champions that deal well with energy-related damage could be really helpful in this type of scenario. You might be thinking, how the hell does Outrage work? Well, it's all about shrugging off debuff effects or applying debuff effects or purifying debuff effects. Certain things like that. As you can see with the parameters of this, you get an Outrage passive, which you're then able to trigger at a later point with Imperious Rex to then get yourself a bar of power for special attacks. But also something to consider is the more Outrage you have, the extent of damage from special attacks increases. So you may want to, instead of absorbing those by dashing back and hitting a block instead it's a case you could even build up those outrages and smash in with some almighty amounts of special attack damage but it doesn't stop there the fun goes on with this champion do a heavy attack absorbed outrage to get power great medium attack still bleed great regeneration what the heck regeneration is amazing brilliant to see that and as well we've got special attack abilities refresh the duration of any fury or prowess effects so there's there's prowess effects as well as fury effects on this champion brilliant and finally as well being hydrated obviously you want to be hydrated the fact is it increases the amount of stun so there must be some sort of hydration type mini ability in the champion which is going to make him improve or improve damage improve himself i'm sure there's going to be more to this so yeah stay hydrated and it will do wonders for you cheers watery. Now more special attacks look really darn devastating, even more so if you've got Outrage built up and as well if you're in Imperious Rex, which is going to mean for some intense amount of damage, not just from the fact that you gain some Furies, you also if you've got Prowess on and we know because we talked about a moment ago how Prowess benefits this champion, but it doesn't stop there. Bleeding. Yes, there's extensive amounts of bleeds that are whipped up by doing special attacks, in particular the SP1. Also, not to mention the SP2, which still retains some sort of damage output that is still quite high, but with the added bonus of being incredibly unblockable, as is the first, if played rightly, and also having stun off the back of it. So either way, this is going to be a really devastating chain of either L1s or L2s, depending on how you spam it. But also don't forget the SP3, which does improve things with Fury. Now it's time for our new feature, Random Fact About a Character of the Day. Did you know that Neymar went to war with Wakanda? No? Well, before the collapse of the Marvel Universe and Secret Wars, relations between Wakanda and Atlantis broke down. The two nations were engaged in a brutal prolonged conflict that cost them both dearly. All the while, Black Panther and Neymar reluctantly worked together with the Illuminati to resolve the collapsing multiverse issue. When Shuri, who was leading Wakanda in the conflict at the time, found out T'Challa was working with Namor, she cast the former king out. T'Challa was made king of the dead instead, tasked with protecting the area around Wakanda. Having lost everything thanks to Namor, T'Challa's hatred for the Submariner only multiplied. 
Now we've learned what we're going to get with Namor, now we're going to move on to Sue Storm. But what are your thoughts so far on that character? Do you feel Namor is going to be like Hyperion in a case of spamming those special attacks with an added little bonus of having to build up with Outrage as well as these little micro abilities? I'm shocked as well as you are that the regeneration is going to be in there for him. So only waits to be seen if his damage output is going to be maybe like that of Cull Obsidian. I'm sure we all would love that. But the fact is, will he be good for defensive properties as well? When the champion's released, we'll find out. But let's move on to Sue Storm. I think as players and as fans, we're expecting some huge defensive values from this character. In particular with force fields and as well with invisibility giving her this kind of ghost vibe but with a good defensive kind of shielding as well that guy that has a shield what's his name that's right captain america also it could even be the case that the champion gets a pre-fight ability the best defense pre-fight ability or slightly obscured gillette commercial the two things that look pretty cool is attack and dodging so basically if the enemy has debuff effects on the more damage you're going to do the same thing with dodging we dodge backwards invisible woman is not struck by attacks that's helpful, but then when you consider dropped inputs, the fact is, well, you'd love, love that to be a thing that dodges in-game work consistently, but they just don't. So hopefully this dynamic and this mechanic actually works when it's put in. And now what I'm going to intend to do is very much in a nutshell describe what is the force field. So Invisible Woman's force field will be a defensive measure. It will take damage, it will reduce down damage. If you're taking damage yourself, it will grow in strength. It will allow you to damage output more, but also at the same time, it will reduce down criticals coming in from enemies. So force field, good, but it does cool down. So it will go down to zero, it will cool down, it will come back up again, but you have to still remain clever with the way you play and don't rely on it so much because, well, force fields go down, as we know, if you have seen a Star Trek film. The same thing really can be said for invisibility. It does work in the same way that it's not going to be there permanently, but it can be activated at various times. But what it gives is vulnerability. If you've been familiar with dash vulnerability when you've been playing dungeons and also some other content throughout the game, you'll know that that benefits you positively. So you do apply some of that onto the opponent. So that's cool when some sort of the nodes then become aspects of certain character builds. Both SP1 and SP2 look to damage output and re-strengthen the force field. If you want to have things that work with the invisibility, like you want to keep your invisibility paused, then you'll be hitting up the SP3. But other than that, it looks like it's all about the force field and damage output via that. As well as the fact that there's decent defense options for this character in general. Even though the full information isn't there of which characters do benefit the synergy-based bonuses, obviously they're going to benefit ones like Namor, as well as Reed Richards in the future, Human Torch and The Thing, and expect some other linking here or there. But you can see from this particular information that it will improve things like regeneration, the force field of the champion in question, lots of different things. So there we have it guys, that has been a video exploring Namor as well as Invisible Woman, two characters that will be coming into the contest next week. Expect those crystals in about one week's time to then two weeks after that point. So very exciting times for the contest. Don't forget to catch up with previous content that I've done on these two characters. As well, if you want games that aren't just about Marvel or comic book, then join me on my other channel, Stormbreaker Gaming. A link is over here as well. And catch up with other Marvel Contest of Champions news that I've done in the past as well. Also, vote in the poll above my head. What are your thoughts on these two characters? Which one edges it for you of a character that you want to get? And have a comment down below on your thoughts about this. But in any case, I've been Rich the Man. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.